Coming up next, On The Spot. I hope you're excited about the Vita because with mere weeks before its US launch, we're cramming as much of the launch lineup as we can into one show. We've got Mod Nation Racers, Unit 13, MLB 12 The Show, Sumiani Demon Arts, and Mortal Kombat. And just to keep you safe when talking about the Vita, the vocabulary is here to clarify proper nomenclature. So forget about the Groundhog because we're live and On The Spot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the GameSpot Studios where we are live and on the spot. I'm your host Chris Waters and today we are talking about the PlayStation Vita. It's February, the launch of this system is imminent and we have four live demos of Vita games to show you. Uh, it's a pretty exciting day. My coworker Tom McShay joining me on the couch. Tom, ready to get your uh, fingers on? Well, you're not going to actually be playing. No. No, you're just going to be watching. And uh, first up, we've got CJ Heine from Zipper Interactive here to show off Unit 13. CJ, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. Thanks for having me. We're really glad to have you guys here. Uh, Zipper Interactive obviously has a great pedigree as a shooter developer. And Unit 13, third person shooter coming out for the Vita pretty soon? Yeah, it's uh, early March is when it'll be out. Excellent. Uh, all right, so. You know, folks are familiar with, with SOCOM, your big franchise, but Unit 13 is a, is a new direction for you guys, a new creation. Yeah, we wanted to, to craft a third-person shooter experience specifically for the Vita. Uh, so the idea is it's a, it's a modern-day military shooter with mm -hmm. a heavy emphasis on tactics and, uh, and scoring. But again, it, it, it largely focuses on quick little missions that are, are, are great for people on the go. Excellent. Five-minute missions, 15-minute missions. Well, Hopefully we'll get a chance to show some of that today. Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, we've got our Vita set up over back there in the studio. Uh, we've got a camera perched looking over someone's shoulder. And there we have it. It's Unit 13. Uh, it looks like we are like working on the loadout right here. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're setting up their, their gear in the Armory right now. Uh, yeah, right now they're showing some of the, uh, the co-op, the co-op lobby. Right, right now, this is, this is our, our time to talk about co-op. Mm -hmm. um, because we've talked previously quite a bit about the, the game itself, the, you know, using the touch screens for zooming and swapping camera shoulders and, and things like that. But, but the big thing today is, is co-op. So here we have the co-op lobby, showed two players side by side. You see what player you've got, you see what your buddy's got. You have an opportunity to chat. The, the Vita's actually got a really nice built-in mic right on the front of it. Um, so the two players can just chat freely. You can, you know, obviously mute yourself, but... Sure, sure. Um, but no need to plug in any kind of headset or try to no. expand beyond that. You're right there. No, I've, been, I've been impressed with how well the, uh, the mic works. Yeah. So right now they're going to be loading into uh, to Mission 5. It's called Desert Rift. Uh, one of the things about the game is that it's split into 36 individual missions on the grid. Uh, we've talked a little bit about this in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea is that each one of these missions is kind of a standalone. There's not really an overarching story that connects them all. It's, it's meant to be just a standalone mission. And the idea is you pick one of six unique operatives with unique loadouts and uh, unique abilities uh, to, to go in and, and take on these missions and attempt to get a high score. I mean, the, the big thing about this game is that it's extremely competitive and social. Uh, when you're playing in the single player, everything you do is, is uh, scored and tracked and put on leaderboards. Um, and the same thing holds true for co-op. Uh, the nice thing about co-op is that it gives you and one other player, two-player co-op, a chance to go into these same missions that you'd normally play in single player and play them in co-op. Um, the, what's different about it is that each one of the, uh, the players has their unique scoring abilities and little perks and loadouts, and you can kind of uh, meld the two together. So in, in this one, for example, we've got, uh, we've got Python, which is our heavy guy. He gets multi-hit kills, where the more times he hits a character or hits an enemy, he gets more points for it. And then the other player is playing as his animal. He's kind of our well-rounded guy. Um, so when you go in an area like this, with one well, there we see the it's like a six-hit kill bonus. Oh yeah, it's yeah. a huge amount of points. So the, the two players can be talking to each other and trying to figure out, okay, well I need to kill this guy, and you need to kill that guy, and trying to figure out the the maximum amount of points to earn for it, so you can have Python and try to rally off a bunch of body shots and then finish with a headshot for additional points. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Animal can be trying to to coordinate his kill at the same time so that they get multi-kill bonuses. There's all kinds of ways for both players to coordinate their attacks for points that uh, that they wouldn't normally be able to get in a single player, which is awesome because we have a, a full set of co-op theater boards. So each one of these single player missions that is playable as co-op has a unique 
co-op leaderboard uh, especially set aside for it. Okay, so, so it's, that's interesting because you're not just, you know, when you play from single player to co-op, it's naturally a different, it's naturally a different game. It's a different challenge. You use different strategy, but you guys are sort of taking it a step further with these unique abilities. So mm -hmm. even if I'm not playing as Python, you know, I need to be conscious of opportunities for him to get the multi-hit kills oh, yeah, and definitely. rack up the points that way. And, and a little thing on the screen right now is uh, Python's near a, a planted explosive on the ground. Uh, Python gets bonus points for shooting explosives while there are enemies nearby, an like imp improviser bonus. Um, and that's not something that the other players get as, as much of a bonus for. So they can coordinate that out and actually say, okay, you're playing as this guy, go hit that thing, go set off these certain scoring combinations while I go do this other uh, set of kills. Okay. So I, I noticed that this uses the Wolverine style of health system um, as opposed to the more SOCOM one. Is that true where you regenerate health after being shot? It depends on which one of the game modes you're in. Okay. Uh, right now they're playing in uh, direct action, which is, which is our longest game mode. This is kind of the... 15 to 20 minute style mission. Uh, where health does regen, we're, you know, we, we're kind of forgiving, especially in a co-op game. Uh, but if they were to play one of the other elite game modes, uh, elite has a health bar on it, and you don't get that back while you're playing through. You'll hit certain checkpoints and your health will fill back up. But uh, it's, it's, it's much more difficult, and it doesn't really show as well for, for a, a, okay. a demo. So it combines SOCOM with some of the other shooters, like Call of Duty, and puts them into like different modes almost. Oh yeah, yeah. We have, okay. we have, we have five unique game modes in, in total. We've got Direct Action, which is the one they're playing now. Mm -hmm. Elite, which I've talked about. Uh, we have a, a Covert game mode, which is which is more of a stealth-based one, where you, you actually see uh, awareness states of the enemies that are searching for you. Uh, it's extremely difficult to play in co-op, because you're having, not only do you worry about your own you know, visibility to them, you're worrying about your buddies. Um, extremely difficult. Communication questions. maybe even more crucial on that one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it, it's really hard. And then the other game mode we have is, uh, is Deadline. Deadline's a race against time, so uh, we have a timer that's ticking down constantly. And uh, you're trying to complete the mission in that much time. Every checkpoint you hit, you'll get additional time. Oh, trophy. Yeah, trophy support's great. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Boom. 13 yeah. squared. Uh, and so you can see sort of other evidence of the scoring mechanic being embedded throughout this mission. We have yeah. a multiplier up in the top corner, and uh, is it... I see two scores there. One is is one a team score, or what's yeah. what's the difference? So what's going on up in the up in the, the corner there is uh, the the larger score with the multiplier next to it. That's that's whoever's beat it that is playing on it. The score above that is the the teammate score. Mm -hmm. And this this is a actually a good time to talk about a lot of the scoring because when you're when you're playing co-op, both of you are com uh, adding to the multiplier. So both of you guys are getting points and scoring. That multiplier thing going up really quickly. But if either one of you is taking damage, or if either one of you dies, the multiplier is going to drop. Uh, Looks especially like we just got busted back down to one X from four. Yeah, that's a huge loss. So if these guys are really competitive and going for a really high scoring leaderboard, they they're probably not going to get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if you die, your your multiplier is completely wiped out. Um, but the other player can just walk over and revive you, and you can start building your score back up again. Um, the uh, yeah, a huge amount of points for doing objectives. Uh, there's there's a lot of strategy in which objectives you need to do and which enemies you need to do. Um, ideally, the the players going for the really high scores have spent a lot of time playing through the single player versions of the missions, mm -hmm. know the ins and outs of where all the uh, enemies are are going to be pathing, where the objectives are, which areas to hit first, and then take that knowledge over to co-op where they can both be kind of on the same skill level and knowledge level and crank out a really high score. Okay. Now, so that's that's sort of a, uh, that is that more of a a pro tip from CJ, or do you guys build that in in sort of unlocking different missions at a different pace? You know, you have to complete some single player before that you let you dive right into co-op, just so you at least know the basics. Uh, that's a little bit of a tip for me. Um, <laughs> do the objectives first if you can, and then take out guys. But overall, with the mission grid, if one player has a lot of the mission unlocked and the other one has only a couple missions unlocked, he can hop into a game with the player that has missions unlocked and it gives them a chance if they complete the mission to unlock that one mission in the grid. Oh nice. So I mean the grid is set up so you can kind of choose your route through it as long as you're going through adjacent missions and uh, you can unlock missions out of order basically through co-op. And cool. co-op's also a really great way to, to level up your character. The amount of experience and points you get in a co-op game is much larger than what you get in single player. So for players having a, a difficult time with a normally difficult game in single player, hop on to co-op and get some bonus points. Play some co-op, get some help, get some bonus points. Now, yeah. CJ, uh, since we're live right now, we've got Cynthia standing by in the chat room, and apparently we've got some questions coming in, so get ready. Great. <laughs> yeah, we've got two questions right now. Uh, 
Uh, question number one is uh, Derek. Uh, 477 wants to know uh, what's the deal with the name Unit 13 exactly? And then the other question is a lot of people are excited and wanting to know about the price point. Okay, so Unit 13, where'd you guys pull that from? <laughs> huh. That's a good out one. Out of the ether? Yeah, it's a little bit out of that. I mean, we had we had a long backstory of, of how this team of six is specially chosen from different special ops groups and they all come together and it comes from a, a larger, a, a longer operations group name and it's just got shortened down to unit 13 okay a little bit more catchy but like you said uh, it's sort of the, the focus is more on this is just a you know it's almost a more arcadey focus oh, you're yeah. not you know you're not creating some sort of long linked narrative that's not the focus it's yeah. this is an elite squad they do missions these missions are disjointed but they you know they're still all challenging in different ways and that's, exciting in different ways that's exactly it we, we didn't want the player to get going on a storyline have to turn it off when they get off the bus and then pick up later after work and, and not remember where they left off. Each, each mission is completely standalone. Great. Uh, and so the other question, uh, and I'll tie this into, when is Unit 13, you said early March? Yeah, I think it's, it's March out? 6th. And the price point for, let's say, in American dollars, because <laughs> we're in California right now. I don't actually know what that is offhand. Yeah. Anyone back there? <laughs> no. You'll have to stay tuned to GameSpot to find that out, folks, <laughs> as the uh, release of Unit 13 approaches. Uh, and so, CJ, anything else you want to mention before we before we close it out? Uh, no, I, I got to say, for me personally, we've we've been working on the game for a while, mm -hmm. and I still find myself picking it up and playing it and trying to beat some of the scores that some of our awesome QA guys put up there. Uh -huh. um, I, I I love going through seeing that my score has been beaten by some friends and other coworkers, and then going back through and, and beating their scores. Oh man! All right, so are you guys gonna like do a little leaderboard wipe to help folks out in the oh, yeah. early going, or are oh, you yeah. just gonna set that bar high? No, well, I'm sure we'll reset it, and uh, I'll, I'll intentionally not play for a little while after <laughs> the game comes out, give everybody a chance, and then then I'll show up and, and then come back in and raise the stakes. Yeah, I mean, what's what's nice is that we do have several different filters for leaderboards. We can filter on, you know, if you just want to see where your friends are standing or where what the global global standings are like or just regional like North America sure then then you can set that up but global cool. global is gonna be a battlefield yeah, yeah sounds like it well CJ thank you so much for coming on and showing off unit 13 yeah, of course on the Vita uh, folks up next we're gonna take a look at Mortal Kombat on the Vita we taped a demo earlier and saw all the fatality blood bursting arm lip and stuff you know in the palm of your hand Let's take a look <laughs> So this is Mortal Kombat for the Vita. Uh, we really wanted to kind of make a customized version of Mortal Kombat, which uh, was really, really successful for us. Uh, a lot of people really uh, liked the game a lot, and we wanted to make a version of the game that was customized specifically for the Vita. Um, keeping kind of the same materials and uh, details that made Mortal Kombat successful, but actually adding a, a few more gadgets and uh, things in there to make the game customized for Vita. We wanted it to be a, an all new experience so that people that have actually kind of played through Mortal Kombat already would have something to look forward to and, uh, and want to play this game. So the game runs at 60 frames per second, uh, just like its uh, console counterparts, and the game looks phenomenal. Uh, the screen for the Vita is very, very high fidelity, so it really brings out the characters and, uh, and the backgrounds as well. We couldn't be happier with the, with the way the screen looks on the Vita. Um, the backgrounds and the characters are, are very similar to the, uh, to the console versions of the games. We wanted to keep uh, the personality of the characters and the personality of the backgrounds intact for these, so you'll notice that some of the some of the same kind of design elements that we had for the backgrounds in Mortal Kombat are included for Mortal Kombat for the for the Vita as well. Um, one of the things that we wanted to make for this game as well is to make it a little bit more um, more accessible. Uh, you know, the Vita is going to bring in a lot more casual fans that might not have the uh, the hardcore kind of uh, fighting game mentality that uh, that a lot of our audience for the console games were. Uh, so one of the ways that we were able to do that was to add the touchscreen fatalities. And uh, it kind of uh, brings the, the coolest part of Mortal Kombat, which is kind of uh, doing a fatality, but makes it easier by letting you uh, do the inputs by swiping the gestures on the screen. So for this version of the game, we have all of the characters plus the uh, DLC characters that were available for Mortal Kombat. Um, we have Freddy, uh, Scarlet, Kenshi, Rain, and we also have Kratos, so it's the entire full Mortal Kombat roster. Uh, we also have an additional 16 costumes that weren't available in the console versions of the game that were made exclusively for Vita, including alternate costumes for the DLC characters. 
uh, we think that that's something that fans are going to be really into. Uh, one of the other things that we wanted to design specifically for the Vita was an all-new Challenge Tower. The Challenge Tower is 150 missions that are kind of centered around sort of the things that the Vita allows us to do. And it gives us an opportunity to do things that we weren't able to do in the console game. First mission in uh, the new bonus Challenge Tower, you get to play as Shao Kahn, which was something that fans were really asking for uh, in, the, in the last game. So we kind of wanted to open really big. Uh, with our with our bonus challenge tower, so your first mission is you actually play as Shao Kahn trying to beat Raiden, and um, there's an example of kind of the um, the X-ray touchscreen, even though Brian missed it. Um, <laughs> it's the uh, so it's a full roster. It's a uh, it's a. Uh, all the characters that, that people have wanted. Uh, it's additional costumes that we didn't have, and the costumes are actually unlocked in the Challenge Tower as you ascend it. Uh, in the original console Mortal Kombat, uh, you had to complete the entire Challenge Tower to get your bonus reward. Uh, in this Challenge Tower, we've kind of spread out the rewards as you ascend to kind of give people that compulsion loop to want to keep going to unlock that next costume. And when you get to the final mission, there's a there's a pretty big reward this time. That's uh, that's a lot bigger than the reward that we got for the for the original challenge tower. So this mission is kind of a. Another kind of quirky thing that we were able to do by utilizing the touchscreen, you're actually keeping Scorpion juggled up in the air for a number of seconds. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's it's Mortal Kombat-y. It it has the kind of feel of it, but at the same time, it kind of keeps the basic uh, touch mechanics that people are really familiar with, and it's really intuitive to do those kind of things. Um, do test your balance. Yeah. One of the other things that people have always liked about Mortal Kombat is kind of our our test your missions. You know, we have test your sight, we have test your might, we have test your strike. Uh, we wanted to make a, a couple of versions that were exclusive to the Vita, and one of those things that we're talking about now is test, test your balance. balance. Um, you know, for some reason, somebody sadistically decided that they would have you balancing on a platform above a pit that has a, a bunch of numerous death traps in there. And the goal of it is, by using the Vita's accelerometer, is that you want to keep your character balanced on this platform for a, a set number of time. Um, different missions have different objectives. I believe this mission actually has uh, body parts being thrown at you to kind of throw you a little bit off kilter. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where we have uh, numerous different death traps, so it's not a reward that you're failing, but we figure that people are going to want to fail missions just so that they can see the numerous ways that you can die kind of falling down in this pit. Um, and it does, it takes advantage of the accelerometer on the Vita, and we thought that it was actually uh, a pretty cool addition to that as well. It kind of fits in the whole uh, lore of, of Mortal Kombat. This is another mission where we uh, take advantage of the touch screen. Uh, as you're fighting, uh, the screen gets filled with blood and you actually have to swipe away and clean it off so that you can, uh, you can actually keep on fighting. And again, this is just another creative way that we can incorporate kind of the, the touch screen and, and these kind of intuitive motions into the, the core of Mortal Kombat gameplay. So it's a, it's a nice marriage of the, of the two worlds. Yeah, one of the other things too that we wanted to add is that we wanted to make content for even the most hardcore MK fan that has gone through normal Mortal Kombat and has unlocked everything and earned every trophy. Uh, we actually switched some of the trophies around so there's new trophies for people to add, uh, for people to earn in gameplay and we've also added new art into the crypt that has never been seen before so we have a, a lot of concept art for the DLC characters that just wasn't created when the uh, console version of Mortal Kombat came out, so there's a little bit something uh, for everybody, and even the most hardcore fan is going to find something to uh, to look for in this game. We are keeping this game on par with the console version of the game, so we're using um, the tweak variable system that we have in place with the console version of Mortal Kombat, so when that gets updated, this version will be updated as well. That way people who have both versions of it can practice out their combos and they'll translate over to the console version as well. We wanted to, to keep them kind of the same so that it was, uh, it was the same game. We feel you know, a lot of the more hardcore players are probably going to go around and have this to train and, you know, while they're taking the bus to school or, or whatever and then they can come home and knock somebody out on the, on the Big Brother version of it. So uh, it's pretty cool. So yeah, this is another quirky mission. Um, for some reason someone's given Striker a ridiculous number of uh, fruit and he's actually tossing them at Kenshi and this is kind of a tug of war with your super meter as you uh, as he throws fruit you want to slice it as he throws grenades you want to block it and once you've filled up your super meter you're going to perform uh, your x-ray 
and you'll win the match. So again, this is just using the kind of core engine of Mortal Kombat and incorporate it into the Vita. Ghost Striker. So Mortal Kombat for the Vita will be available spring 2012. All right, there's your look at some pretty gnarly looking fatalities in Mortal Kombat. And uh, now we're onto something that's maybe a little more beautiful, a little more painterly, for, uh, perhaps. We have Jimmy Soga here from Xseed Games joining us on the couch. Jimmy, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you are here to show off Sumioni Demon Arts. Yes. Uh, Sumioni is for the PlayStation Vita, obviously, but. Mm -hmm. um, it takes place in an uh, alternate reality of ancient Japan. Um, it uses this beautiful um, traditional Japanese um, art style called sumie. That's an ink art. And basically, the story, just to the story is that there's these special ink masters back in the days that they can summon um, random stuff, including gods. And one of the dark ink master uh, decides to summon a very evil ink de demon. And with his power, he basically controls the world now. And it's been going on for a couple of years. And one of the righteous ink master decides to sacrifice his life to call um, another sealed dinky, um, inky demon. I was gonna say you're you're talking about a, a, a fierce-looking demon as the antagonist, but this dude looks pretty fierce. Yes, and demonic. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is a demon. Um, he's not an evil uh, demon per se, but he was more of a lazy and didn't really care about the world. And because of his um, nonchalantness or just being lazy, he got um, punished and he was sealed away. And mm -hmm. so he, the Ink Master, the Righteous One, decided to make a deal with him that he'll free him, but as um, soon as he decides to call it quits, he'll be sealed up again. So he needs to fight for that. So he's on parole, basically, yes. from the <laughs> realm of being sealed off. And Arson does not violate his parole. Oh, no, no, not at all. Arson, so as you can see, um, you can, the art style is all Sumia type, but also you can interact with the gameplay by t using your finger as a brush, and then you can draw a um, traversal path, or you can call more like natural effects like fires, lightning, storms, um, mist. Uh, you can call upon two of your friends, which are um, ink demons, uh, I mean, sorry, ink gods. Uh, one of them like, resembles a phoenix, one of them resembles like a food dog. We saw the lion. phoenix in that, at the end of that level. Oh, uh, no. Oh, wait, did she show it? I'm sorry, I wasn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Uh, there's, yeah, a totally big phoenix float, and so they, the, these ink gods, are, you summon them to help you out for a limited amount of time? Yes, uh, they have their, yeah, time. And every, so on the corner of the screen, you see the green bar, which is the health bar, and mm -hmm. then the white one is this ink power gauge. Um, every time you use any kind of ink, um, they'll go down. But as you can see on the right-hand side, she's refilling the ink by rubbing the back side of the PS Vita, and that's how you generate more ink. Okay. Uh, she's summoning one of the gods right now. Um, you have to trace how the thing shows. She messed up right now. <laughs> like so. And okay, so like, she's a little nervous. Is it like <laughs> in calligraphy where the direction of the brush stroke matters? It's yes. not just make this shape. No. It's you have to get the strokes uh, correct. In the very beginning, you'll see like a little light uh, yeah. ball, and then you have to trace exactly how it goes. And then th the more you're within the path, the path more, um, the longer they'll be able to help, oh, okay. uh, aid you. And so, so she, we're seeing the like a, dra a yeah, she lion. Just, yeah, dragon she just thing. called the food dog the, the more of an ancient Chinese lion type god. Uh, he's more of a ground assault uh, guy. Mm -hmm. um, they have this powerful being that they can do once in a while uh, before they disappear. I and see. It does some massive damage. So uh, I think like the obvious comparisons are Okami and Kirby Canvas Curse. Yes. How much does it annoy you to hear those comparisons? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a lot of resemblance, especially for um, uh, Okami, because it is it taking place in ancient Japan. It uses a lot of brush stroke, and you use brush, bru brush strokes to um, aid your protagonist. But it is an action platformer, and yeah, it's a completely different game style. The visual looks might be the same, but yeah. OK. And so these, you, we had said, uh, we don't have the camera on the Vita right now, but the rear touchpad was being used to recharge the ink. Correct. But the, in terms of tracing the actual symbols and you know making platforms, that's all touchscreen right on the front. Correct. So you basically use the analog stick or the um, directional stick uh, to control uh, the main character, the Sumioni. Mm -hmm. And you draw lines, you draw more stuff on the screen itself. and. 
let's, let's say the state is starting. On the right hand corner, you see a little um, uh, circle, but if you click on that, uh, can you click on that, Brittany? OK. Oh, no, uh, the water, water brush. So by touching that, you'll be able to use a water brush, which means um, if there's any type of, um, if you burn something, you can use the water brush to erase it. You can put a flaming heart in the sky. Yes, and then you can erase it with the water brush. Uh, and by, in the case of um, fire, if you erase it with the water, it uh, generates steam. And with that steam, you can actually attack enemies. Um, you can, actually, you can um, summon a storm. And by summoning a storm, you shoot a lightning bolt down on the ground. But if you use the water paintbrush to erase the um, cloud, you can actually disperse that lightning in different directions. Oh, really? So, so there's different styles to play. Sort of a modifier on the powers that you have. Correct. And it's also, if there's shooting um, projectiles at you, you can use the water brush to defend yourself. Neat. And so you're sort of talking about um, giving examples of combat applications. Yes. And this is an action platformer, uh, so combat is a big focus. Are there any puzzle elements that you guys use in terms of, you know, Fire and water and storm and ink. Uh, not necessarily in those sense. It's just um, you just want to strategically. There's a horde of the enemy coming out, and you have a lim limited amount of ink um, gauge to use. And of course, you can refill it. But while you're refilling it, you, you're kind of vulnerable. You yeah, can, you're just kind of sitting there. Right. Uh, if you move around and try to recharge it, you won't be able to recharge. So one of the ways that you can like try to draw some lines to get up in a place that the enemies won't be able to affect you and try to charge up as fast as possible. But the mm -hmm. ink, uh, the passes way, will disappear with time too. So after you get past the early levels, is it, does it get really difficult? Is it like a beautiful Joe type game? Or is it more like Okami, which is pretty easy? Uh, it gets uh, ridiculously uh, difficult. Whoa, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's more of more enemies coming at you at the same time, so you really have to strategize how much ink you use, um, when not to use it, and to try to use your own skills to defeat them, okay. um, and where to attack them from. Are there social connectivity features so you can taunt your friends who can't pass those hard stages then? Uh, you could, yes. <laughs> uh, another big feature is um, it has um, multiple branching stories. So as, uh, as you go, it's not like a straight line of storytelling. And it has multiple endings as well. So depending on how well you play the game, um, you'll get to see different endings, which means like different. there's a good ending and a bad ending. And as I said, uh, Sumiyoni, he's, a sort of, he's sort of like a lazy god, or not god, demon. But as he progressed through the game, he has more relationship with his two um, sumi gods, and you can actually have they are they're having conversation and cut screens, and you can actually see him um, grow as a character as well. So he sort of gets like a magical friendship going with these yeah. folks. Yes, he has more of a he becomes more or he tries to become more of a righteous demon. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, no one wants to get sealed back into demon prison for another, you know. Whatever years. Yes. Thousands of years. <laughs> so you start off with a lot of powers, it seems like. Do you, do you unlock a lot more as it goes? Uh, not necessarily the stuff that you can do, but uh, more you get more ink power. In the very beginning, uh, you'd be able to do pretty much everything that you can do, but each move will take a lot of the ink. So you won't be able to perform one after another. But after you go through the games and you get more um, ink pots, you'll be able to summon or do more stuff with the ink. Okay. And before we wrap it up here, Jimmy, uh, we've got some questions from the audience, so we'll toss it back to Cynthia. What do they, what do they want to know, Cynthia? Um, so, oh, Sefi142 is asking um, how else you utilize the back pad on, for this game in particular, and then, of course, everyone's asking for a release date. All right, so we got the charging yes. on the little back thingy <laughs> over there. Back panel pad thingy. <laughs> um, it charges. Ink. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and so, well, that and well, let me add it. Well, it charges ink, but there's so many going on at the same time because you need to control um, your uh, character and you need to draw all these lines and summon mm -hmm. um, your semi-gauze and um, try to deflect all the projectiles. So there's a lot going on and try to charge at the same time. And so. it's not just something you can do idly, like have your fingers going the whole time while you are jumping around, because your character actually has to stop right. and, okay. ch and charge. And, and like if you can see the screen right now, it gets pretty hectic. In the, and so you need to really find a good place to do it. And I found out that if you, more than this, if you like really rub it with one hand, yeah, uh -huh. it works a lot better. So you really have to stop the game and try to recharge a little bit at a time and play 
keep doing that. You just like flip it over on the back straight up? Uh, you can do whatever. You, yeah. you, you know, people can, <laughs> oh, on the head. Yeah, then it'll stick up there. Jimmy, thank you so much for coming by, Thanks showing for off Sumioni. Uh, when is this is this release window? Folks can get it pretty soon after the Vita launch? Uh, yes, it's a, uh, sorry. it's a release window. It, we're planning to shoot it out in March. Uh, Prices TBD. Great. Excellent. There you have it, folks. Sumioni Demon Arts. Um, now, if you were uh, if you were noticing during that segment, we were talking about the rear, the back pad thing that's touch sensitive on the PlayStation Vita. A lot of different terms flying around for that particular piece of the hardware. This week's vocabularium is going to clear it all up for you. In this week's visit to the vocabularium, we are going to highlight the importance of knowing and using correct terminology. Our instructive example is. Rear touchpad. Rear touchpad. A multi touch pad of capacitive sensors located on the back of the PlayStation Vita that allows players to interact with games and programs. The rear touchpad lets you climb ropes in Uncharted Golden Abyss, reshape the Earth in Little Deviants, and craft a racetrack in Mod Nation Racers Road Trip. This is one of the marquee features of Sony's new handheld, so you will likely be tempted to point it out when showing friends, coworkers, and random strangers how cool your new device is. Knowing the proper term can help you avoid awkward situations, such as the ones that may arise when using questionable slang terms, such as backstroke, undertickle, Tickling the go Stroke pad. Reach around pad. Remember, the vocabularium is not responsible for emotional or physical consequences that result from using non vocabularium sanctioned words. Rear touch pad. That, uh, not a pretty sight. Uh, we even have someone who calls it, really, just eschews all logical reasoning and calls it the bazinga. I don't, it's, it's weird. Rear touchpad, folks. Just go with what works. Our next demo is going to be Mod Nation Racers Road Trip, and to show it off, we have Jeff Kaplan on set to join us. Jeff, welcome. Oh. How you doing? Oh, dude, it's like a full show of Vita. <laughs> I'm getting like a real great look at all these cool games. And uh, Mod Nation Racers is, is a game we've really enjoyed around the office. We're really looking forward to seeing how it's how you guys have transformed it for the portable system. Oh, excellent. We've done a lot of work on that. Yeah. All right. So we've got we've got it set up in the back. Uh, we have uh, a tr we're in the track studio now. Now, of course, track creation a huge part of the appeal of Mod Nation Racers. Uh, are we gonna are we gonna see some of that in action? Tell me how you guys. Yeah, we're gonna walk you through creating a track right now. Great. Um, everything's done with touch um, to really bring the portable feel to your hands in the Vita. Mm -hmm. um, anything from creating your track, drawing it out, to placing props, modding the terrain. Um, we use the front and the rear touch mm -hmm. um, to utilize both. Right here, we're gonna walk you through drawing your track. Um, if you just uh, put your finger on the thing and drag around, it'll follow your finger, and you can really create anything you want in a matter of seconds. And um, that's your racing line. It's as yeah, easy as that. that's exactly what you're going to be racing on. Wow, that turn, that 360 there is going to be brutal. Uh, <laughs> it'll be fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, once you draw your track, it loads you into the, th um, into the studio, mm -hmm. and then you can manipulate it in any way you want. Um, we're going to start out by uh, modding the actual track. And to do that, um, you just, again, use touch. And you can raise the track up, you can take it sideways, you can drop it down, um, you can manipulate the turns to give yourself a little bank. Um, anything you really want to do, you're good to go. So we're sort of, you, you go from this test, test drive and you're uh -huh. using the buttons to drive the car, but then, you know, you can get to a certain point and then just, you just flip out the little editing module and there you go. You, yeah, all of a sudden you got to jump in the middle of your track now in a matter of a couple seconds again. No kidding. Now, um, yeah. so you're, you use touch. I, I just had an, an image of maybe using the like a tilt sensor to, to bank a turn. Uh, we didn't end up going that direction. Um, we, we kept it real simple. Um, and like right now, she's banking that turn. You just grab oh, yeah. the two sides of it and go. And then there's a copy mode on there. So if you actually like the, um, the bank and you want to take it around the whole turn, you can just copy it along like she's doing. Um, give yourself a little NASCAR feel. That is super simple. Yeah, it is. It really is. Easy as that. 
All right, we actually have an early question coming in from Cynthia from the uh -oh. chat room, so let's see what we got. Um, so see the PS Vita is wondering exactly how long have you guys been working on this game because it looks pretty amazing. Yeah, it does look pretty. Um, it's been in production for a year and a half or so now. Mm -hmm. So you guys been because you know you got to get it get 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 your lead time because are you is this also a release window yep. title? Yep, it's releasing the same day as the Vita. Oh, day, launch day. Launch day. And so you can pick it up with your Vita. Oh yes, nice. Um, all right, so we've moved on from sort of modulating the track proper to giving some, giving a little more environmental flavor. Yeah, now we're just placing a couple props, and again, everything's done just by touching a screen. You know, a prop looks real pretty here. Let's touch it. It goes right there. Mm -hmm. um, it's as easy as that. You can place uh, buildings. Um, we give you access to all the all the different themes, all the different track packs. So you have you have you know probably thousands of things that you can place down um, and you can manipulate them in ways that you weren't able to do on the PS3 like uh, mm -hmm. um, you could rotate things on the PS3 but now we give you the three different axes of rotation so you can rotate it sideways you can put a building completely sideways and drive up it and really do whatever oh, you neat. want now. Yeah, yeah all right so you can get a little bit more uh, a little off more the wall ending, yeah yeah all right now I've put all let's say you know I've, I've put my time into creating this racetrack put my hard work in there, can I then share this with other people? You can. Um, we'll have a full share station on the Vita, and you not only have access to the creations that um, people create on the Vita, mm -hmm. but you also have access to the millions of creations that are on the um, PS3. Oh, really? Yeah. You guys so, are making I mean, all that catalog yeah, of creations? Yeah. Wow. It's, it, there's there's going to be a ton of uh, material for you day one. Um, I think it's up to 600,000 plus tracks now, over a million mods, over a million carts. So, and gonna... that all comes with the sort of the, the yep. rating structure. So you know, it's not just find a good one amidst six million. You yeah, know, it's, yeah. It's and there, there's fine. you can still find the there's highest. A, there's a few ones things we did. Like um, you can search by different parameters. You can search by highest rated. You can search by most downloaded. You can search by newest. So mm -hmm. if you just put something up, you can find it real easy. Or you want to find what's the cutting yeah. what's cutting edge. Yeah, and then we, we put like a button in there called surprise me, and that just brings up like ones that aren't downloaded a lot. Just kind of pulls random ones up for you. So you can really get you know you can find a lot of stuff on there. Cool. And then of course you. There's the actual racing. Yes. <laughs> you can actually race in this game. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, tell us about what kind of different modes you guys have racing-wise. Uh, okay. You know. um, we have uh, the bread and butter is just a quick race. Um, in the quick race, you can you know race any of the tracks you want. Um, she's loading into one of them right now. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, 30 brand new tracks for our career mode. Um, and those are all pumped up. It's six full tours, and as, the, as it goes, it gets harder and harder. Um, I'm actually real proud of those because I helped design some of the tracks on there. So. Oh, yeah? Right So on. we're going we're gonna to have a lot of fun watching people as race As I cars. recall, some of those Mod Nation racers tracks got kind of tricky. Yeah, there. Tom, we, we, we threw a lot of some difficulty. I remember struggling after playing Mario Kart for <laughs> like two decades, and some of them were pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. There's, there's no online head-to-head -head multiplayer. Is this correct? Um, it's something that we're we're looking at right now, and there's more info to come on that. Okay, yeah. so when it when it launches, it won't have that, but hopefully in the future, it might be patched in. Yeah, it's something we're looking into. Okay. Um, we do have a lot of awesome online things in store already. Um, for the competitive racers, we have uh, time trial leaderboards where you can go race a track, and every time you race the track, it'll load ghosts that are um, around your skill level or a little better. And each lap, they'll dynamically get better and better. So if you do better, they'll get better. So you can race against the top ghosts in the world. OK. Um, so you can at least train until. Yep. Okay. And, and that, but there and is, that, there's ad hoc there is There is still, ad hoc. Right? Okay. So if you're in a room with your friends, you can race race together. Okay. Correct. Oh, neat. All right. So and how many? I mean, you know, we have one Vita in office that we got from, <laughs> shipped over from Japan. How many How many have you guys put together in a race? Uh, up to four people in a race. Right on. I think it's really fun, especially when you're in a room with everybody. Yeah. Get a, get a little talking going on. <laughs> a little bit of talking. A little bit, a little of, bit talking. of polite conversation. Yeah, polite conversation. <laughs> so what, what type of thing, so this is, this, is, um, this is not your first Mod Nation game. What types of things did you learn from the racing of the first one that, and the second one that you tweaked for this one? Oh, we tweaked a lot in the racing. Um, we completely redid the drifting to make it a little um, more forgiving for the handheld. Okay. Um, we, uh, we redid the weapon system and the AI. Um, we did a complete overhaul on both of those. We have uh, four new weapons. They're all nature-based, like um, uh, rocks, air, um, fire, and ice. 
Um, actually, when you, my, one of my favorite weapons that we made is when you get uh, level three ice, you turn into a snowball, and you go down the track of the snowball, and you can run other people over. So, so the so, weapon system is if you pick up like three ices in a row, it gets stronger. But yeah, you break yeah. up that chain if you pick up another one, right? Um, once you pick up one weapon, um, all the other weapon pods okay. will turn that color, and that's the only one you can pick up until you use it. Or um, okay. Oh yeah, and then we also made it so you can turn in uh, weapons for boost now. So if you hold the button down and instead of dropping a mine now, it'll it'll cash it in for boost. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, we have a whole lot of surprises in there. Is there anything? Cool. Is there anything that's like the blue shell that kind of just like ruins everything? <laughs> No, be, be honest, Sam's a blue shell hater. He, I am a blue shell hater. Any anything that's fired at you, you have an opportunity to shield. Okay, how about snaking? What's it, snaking? Is there any kind of way to cheat <laughs> boost drift around turns? He's trying to get the advanced tactics right. He wants I to wanna, be ready. I want to know going day. in if well, I'm going to be if I'm going to be throwing the Vita, well, <laughs> which I don't well, want to have to do. We'll give you a special. We'll okay. give you a special rundown. Is there, is there snaking? We're done. Um, there's there's drifting. Okay. Um, and uh, the more you drift, the more boost you get, and then obviously the more boost you can go faster, or you can use it to shield, or you can um, use it for other things. Okay. Yeah. I like that interplay of you know you can cash in the thing, cash in your power ups for boost, or you know you have to yeah. spend boost to shield. It sort of it adds a little bit more of a, a tactical element. Yeah, almost. especially when you're in first place and you get these cool weapons and you have nobody to shoot. You just have blue skies in front of you, mm -hmm. but now now you can actually do something. With it can it. actually yeah. help you out. You know, exactly. You don't just aren't just hung out there to drive yeah. in first place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool, Jeff. Well, uh, anything else you want to mention about Mod Nation Racers Road Trip before we wrap it up? I think I'm pretty good. I think we're pretty set. You guys know when it's coming out. You guys know what's in store. Uh, plenty of creative opportunities. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on. Showing thank you. It off. Thanks for having us. Yeah, great to see you. you. Uh, up next, it's a look at this week's digital downloads. What's up, Game Spotters? This is Aaron Sampson bringing you a list of top digital downloads this week on Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, No We Shop channel. New this week on XBL, if you thought Dance Central and Just Dance were too good, then Rhythm Party is your title for 800 Microsoft points. According to the trailer, the game has effects, renowned artists, gameplay, no choreography, and more vagueness than a politician running for president. If all that sounds great to you, there's a trial. Next, the studio that brought you the 8.0 scoring Sesame Street for Connect is asking your kids, are you not entertained? It's Double Fine Happy Action Theater for 800 Microsoft points. The game promises to bring lava, cloning, pigeons, snowballs, and acid flashbacks to your living room. Feel free to try it out with the trial version. Double Fine is not responsible for the reemergence of repressed 60s memories. On PSN, we spend most of our lives as a solid, so spend a day as a liquid with Puddle for $9.99. Released last week on the 360, Puddle came in at a 6.0 fair score for its beautiful and varied visuals and diverse assortment of environments, liquids, and challenges. The score took a hit for unrelenting difficulty with puzzles relying too much on trial and error. You can trial and error it out with the demo. Old but newly available this week on PSN, it's the 7.5 good scoring Madden NFL 12 for $29.99. Apparently football is a sport that people seem to like. This is also the game that didn't lock you out last year when players were locked out. Next is Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days for $19.99. It's the game filmed with an old busted VHS camera, about two psychopaths and a 6.5 fair score. The game features both a short co-op main storyline and the very interesting multiplayer Fragile Alliance mode where players commit heists together while deciding when and if they want to share the loot or shoot each other in the back. If you feel your time with Dog Days was too short, you can keep the co-op going with the 6.0 fair scoring Kane and Lynch Dead Men for $14.99. Finally, round out your PSN week with Mini Ninjas for $19.99. This 7.5 scoring title proved that it's not the size of your shrooken that matters, it's your ability to make bad guys dead with them that counts. Switching to XBL, speaking of dead, blast Mother Nature in the X-Ray bits with Cabela's Outdoor Adventures for $39.99. Suck it deer, suck it bunny, suck it fish, take that you horny duck. Next, the first Templar will see you looking for the most famous Krunk Cup in history for $29.99. This title scored a 7.0, and if you like Holy Grail quests, that's what this is. Finally, round out your download week with a 7.0 scoring sci-fi shooter, Section 8, for $29.99. Section 8 focuses on 32-player combat, but has a single-player training wheels campaign if you need it. 
Moving on, game demos this week are definitely worth your time. On PSN, it's the Twisted Metal multiplayer demo. And on PSN and XBL, there's the Syndicate co-op demo. There goes my weekend. In new DLC this week, on PSN, Dead Island gets Rider White for $9.99. And on XBL, Iron Brigade gets the Rise of the Martian Bear for 400 Microsoft points. In game trailers, we've got footage for, on PSN, Reality Fighters, Aliens, Colonial Marines, and The House of the Dead 3. On XBL, you can watch footage for Syndicate, Aliens, Colonial Marines, and The Darkness 2. That's all the time we have. Join us next week for our top picks of digital downloads. And we're back, ready for our fourth Vita demo of this Vita Pack show. Joining us on set is Ramon Russell, Community Manager for MLB 12, the show. Ramon, welcome to the set. Nice to have you. Glad to have you here. Uh, we're having a great day showing off Vita games. and. Uh, MLB 12 The Show, obviously a, a revered franchise on the PlayStation 3, The Show, uh, but you guys are bringing it to the Vita. And how's, it, how's it going? Pretty good. Yeah. Um, we, we just finished with the game. Uh, we're just at this point finishing up bugs and a little polish, so we're really excited to get in people's hands. You getting any like last minute injuries in the training camps onto the list? Uh, <laughs> we, we just put Prince Fielder on uh, the Tigers. So right that was on. the last roster move. We locked the rosters once that happened. Um, so yeah, we're, we're real happy about it. Cool, cool. Try it. All right, so we've got we've got a game queued up. We're gonna go take a look at uh, who, we, who we got playing: the Giants and the Dodgers. Yeah, of course. Classic rivalry, very fitting for our Bay Area location here. Um, so give us some folks some highlights from what they're seeing. We just saw the, dirt, the player pitch with a touch. Plate, yeah, so I you can, we wanted to implement, third. you know, what makes the Vita Two special, which is the touch control. Third. So as you can see, he can pick his pitch pitches by using the touch screen. Mm -hmm. um, you can also do pickoffs using the touch, uh, using the back touch. You can and also feel with the back touch, here. which is really cool. And, and, and it's really simple. It's like you're holding a base and, you know, to throw the first, it's over to the right. Throw the second, it's up. Home is down, and obviously third is over to the left. No and all of the menus you can navigate with, with touchscreen. You can warm up pitches in the bullpen using a touchscreen. It's, it's, it's a really cool feature set for this I'm year, picturing so. doing those throws, and that seems like a really great, like yeah. really natural fun. thing. Because that, that image, you know, is just burned into your brain whenever you're watching baseball. So, boom, there it is. There that's, it is. That's very cool. Yeah, and it's just one of the countless, as easy as the touchscreen now, it's one of the countless features that we've added this year. Uh, but most importantly, our goal was... You know, we've been making the PS3 game for so long, and mm -hmm. like you said, it's very revered by our fans. Um, the two biggest things we had during Prototype um, was let's get as much of the PS3 version on the Vita and make it special. And secondly, it's cross-platform saves, which is, which is huge uh, for our consumers. We think we're really going to really have over. fun with it. Yeah, I mean, a, you know, a baseball game is not a, a very short affair. It's not a, it's not a few minutes and play and then put it away, but the with a cross-platform save, you have your game going at home, you play it when you're out, you can, and you just boom back and forth super Exactly. Uh, so if, you know, if you're a road, road to the show up, guy, if you play franchise or season, um, you can start playing, save it, um, pick up your Vita, take it on the road, download that save file, and keep on playing. So you're not losing any of that time commitment, uh, which we thought was really, really important. You can keep going back and forth. You know, me, I'm a big road to the show guy. I can just keep saving and playing back and forth if I'm on a train or if I'm traveling um, on a plane all the time. We think it's something people really going to use this Work that career. Exactly. Yeah, you get your, get your swings in. Uh, that, so, now that we, the PS Vita is coming in a Wi-Fi or a 3G, uh, different models, uh, you know, that sort of affects the connectivity. Um, you know, where you can get connected and whatnot. Was that a, a factor for you guys in developing the, 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 cloud, the cloud saves, the, the cross um, We stuff? always developed to the lowest common denominator to make sure whichever version of the Vita you bought, it wouldn't really affect you. Um, so it was something we thought about, but we wanted to make sure that, you know, everybody could do the same thing. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to have, you don't have the wrong console exactly. to play this game. You exactly. got the Vita, you're good to go. You got, you got the Vita and the PS3, which is really big this year. Um, we've done quite a lot to the PS3 version. I think we're, when we stopped counting, we have over 70 new features and improvements in the PS3 version. I think we were able to get about 60 of those into the Vita version of the game. No kidding. Which is really special. Yeah, it was interesting. We were talking earlier with um, the developers of Unit 13, which was our first demo, and he was saying, 
they, you know, they're developing for the Vita. It's the first generation of Vita games. Kept being surprised how much he could put in, how much they could get on there, and like the, the limitations weren't as limiting as they thought. Yeah, because you know, obviously, we go back to the PSP version, and there were only so many things we could do with the PSP version. People always ask, "Well, why can't we have this feature?" Or I want to take my road to the show on the uh, franchise on the road. And when we started working on Vita, we found out we could do pretty much almost anything that we wanted to. And so you're not getting MLB, MLB you know, 11 on the Vita. You're getting MLB 12 that's on the PS3 with pretty much all of the really, really big features like the new ball physics. Uh, there's a new pitching mechanic. There's a new hitting mechanic. Um, there's over a thousand new animations. All of those things are on the Vita for you to, to take on the road with you. No kidding. That's... Uh that's a pretty impressive feat. I gotta say, it sounds uh, it sounds pretty cool. Uh, so do you know if there's any kind of if you buy both versions, if you get kind of like a deal, or do you have to pay full price for both? Um, I don't have anything to report on that now, but it's definitely something uh, that that we've thought about. Okay. Uh, so stay tuned. Okay. All right, we've got uh, some questions coming in from our YouTube chat room, uh, asking about a UK release or a Europe release. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have an answer for that question. <laughs> all right, all right. Stay tuned. We'll we'll ho hopefully get something for you on that uh, in the coming months. Um, but so who's your team here, Ramon? When you when you pay, I mean, I know you you know you gotta you know gotta try a bunch of them. You know, you try to maybe be a little bit more agnostic, but you gotta have a team. I'm a well, we make the game in San Diego, so I'm a Padres fan, which is. <laughs> which, He's laughing. Which, he understands my pain. He understands my pain. It's you know sometimes it's easier than other times. Yeah, yeah. I mean living in San Francisco, it's easy. You know, right now, yeah, that's for sure. There. <laughs> it's been easy for a couple of years, but uh, you know, I grew up in Boston, uh, and this was pre. Boston sports renaissance that's right. like happened in the past decade, so I know about uh, rooting for a team that doesn't quite get there. <laughs> Um, all right, so we've seen you know selecting the pitch and then sort of tapping the the, the area. It, it seems like it works pretty much the same for hitting. You sort of picking your picking your. So swing. for hitting for touchscreen, uh, what we did was we allowed you to guess pitch, mm -hmm. um, so you can guess pitch and you can guess location. And what you do is you just tap the portion of the strike zone that you want to guess location, and that's how it works. And you know because we wanted to do because obviously this is the first year um, mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure we use you know, the unique functionality of the Vita. Um, it's definitely something we'll elaborate on as we go to MLB 13 and MLB 14. So this is just the beginning. So have you guys already in developing for the Vita sort of spotted things that you know you maybe want to explore on the next? The of next course, our, our feature list for. You know, 13 is already pretty long of things that we want to do. Such as? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, unfortunately, no, obviously I can't, I can't tell you. Exactly. you know, but what I can tell you is, like we told you before, you know, basically over 60 of the new improvements and new features in the PS3 version, it's in the Vita version. And we think people are really going to be surprised at just how close to the PS3 version the Vita version of the MLB 12 show. Very cool. So all the touchscreen stuff, is it, is it optional? Or is there, is there another control method to do those same things? Or is it just So um, I think we have maybe 10 different ways to play the game. Wow. We have four different pitching mechanics. Okay. Uh, one, we have four different hitting mechanics. So something for everyone. So there's something for everyone. So okay. you can use those. And you can turn on the touch screen. Okay. You don't have to use it. So it's an option. Yeah. And we're real big on options. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently. San Diego. Yeah. So you can play the game however you want. <laughs> Very cool. And so, uh, now, swinging a hard hit ball now, to short. Uh, as we are getting Jerry towards, o. how are we doing in this game? First, and it's a good start the, uh, to the inning for Lincecum. Two up, ticker, two down. down. We're hoping to do nothing. Yeah. Do nothing, John. Let's try for y'all around from the loss last night. He was Let's see if we can maybe get out of this game. bad situation. He's got two outs. Two outs, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, the MLB 12, the show is looking great on the Vita, and I'm really intrigued with all the stuff that you guys have managed to to put in there, that to make it, you know, almost commensurate with the, the PlayStation 3 version, and especially the connectivity too. Uh, is there? Now, if I'm, is there competitive connectivity between Vitas? Between Vitas, yes. There's online play Vita to Vita. Okay, cool, cool. And dare I ask, can Tom and I be have? Can we have a game that we are competing with each other in, and that is saved between? And I can, and that goes between Vita and PS3 as well. Unfortunately, not. No, that's no, that's just, like one. That seems like. <laughs> 
it makes my brain hurt to just describe it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but understandable. If you play in franchise and you gotta take a plane somewhere, you know you can you can save it up um, online, download it, and take it with you. And there you go. And that that's I think that's a, just a great way to make a, maybe a, a longer form game, a sports game, much more palatable for the portable. I really didn't mean to rhyme there, but I totally. Did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ramon. Uh, anything else before we wrap it up here about MLB 12? Um, MLB 12, the show will be available exclusively for the PlayStation 3 and the Vita, March 6th. March 6th. Fantastic, Ramon. Thanks so much for coming on, showing it off. Thank you Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, now we're going to check in with Tom Magrino. He's bringing you the news uh, this week in video game world. Let's find out what's up. What's up, Tom? Hey, everyone. Welcome to GameSpot News Break for the first week of February. I'm Tom Magrino. Microsoft said today that... Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Is this the PlayStation Vita show? I'm going to do this. I shouldn't, but I am. For you, Chris Waters. So all of those games you guys just heard about, Unit 13, Mortal Kombat, Mod Nation Racers, et cetera, et cetera, my recommendation to you, take it or leave it, is to pick them up through the PlayStation Network, and not because it's the environmentally progressive thing to do. No, it's because you'll be able to get them cheaper. How do we know? Well, as with most stories, it started with us trying to find an image of Batman riding a robot unicorn on NeoGAF. We were successful, uh, but we also found a leaked Best Buy screenshot confirming the digital price tag for Vita games. And when we asked Sony about it, they returned a, yeah, you've, you've basically got the thrust of it. So Sony didn't say how much cheaper games will be if bought as digital wares, but it looks like it'll be about 10%. For instance, Unit 13 and MLB 12 carry a $36 price tag down from 40, and if you squint, you can kind of see little deviants costing $27 down from 30. So, lest it not be said, thank you, Sony, for finally delivering on the promise of bringing down the price of games by cutting out the middleman. Now, maybe other digital distribution services like, I don't know, these guys will follow suit, but maybe not. All right, that does it for today. Back to you, Chris. Unicorn. All right, and we are back. Our Vita extravaganza is wrapping to a close. We've got some trivia prizes to give away to you coming up shortly, but I want to introduce you to a special guest, a face you're going to come to know and love. Maybe you despise a little bit, but oh. also love. Uh, <laughs> Already? Jeez. <laughs> it's Carlos Rodella hey, here with up, us man? on the couch. Uh, How you doing? Great nice to have you here, Carlos. Now, you've been working in these studios. Uh, been, I'm hearing your bo voice booming out as you uh, work on the show I am loud. I'm sorry. Here. I apologize. Uh, tell folks about the new show you got cooking up. Yeah, it's called Screen Tear, and um, I think it's going to be hilarious or terrible. Holy I think hilarious, though. Uh, we talk, we talk, it's a video game clip show, so we look at video game clips, and we find the ones that are interesting and funny, mm -hmm. but then we also uh, find ones that are dumb. There's and then we want to, yeah, there's, so there's a many. lot of them. And so we uh, make fun of those. That sounds yeah. like a good time. And explosions and awesome, and we punch each other sometimes. Really? Yeah, that happens. Who do you punch? Uh, each other? Yeah. It's funny. And so it's you and? Oh, a bunch of people, just a, a crew of people. A whole yeah, crew yeah, of folks on yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan McDonald and Homer and everybody, yeah. Very cool. Uh, now, we, you guys have been, been recording, been polishing the show, been writing it up. Uh, Screen Tear is going to be able, folks are going to watch tomorrow, the inaugural episode. Yeah, so is it goes up for? Friday. There's a teaser tonight, I think. It's like bam, bam, bam. And Caesar tonight, and then Friday goes live. Uh, and we want it to be interactive, too, so we want you to put your dumb videos <laughs> to us <laughs> or your hilariously great videos. Uh, you want to Twitter at GameSpot, and then we're going to like take the submissions and put them part of the show. So totally interactive, too. There you go, folks. You ever yeah. wanted to get your stuff on GameSpot, into GameSpot, help us out and like get your name dropped and also... Uh, help us, you know, and maybe make this get show made fun awesome. of, but but also we might say it's awesome, but in like a totally nice way. <laughs> yeah, in a totally <laughs> nice way, yeah. never a mean way. We're not no, like not mean spirited. Just, just having all well, having fun. fun yeah. Some video game. That just, sounds. Uh, it sounds really cool, Carlos. I'm cool. definitely looking yeah, forward yeah, to it. Uh, all right, I got to give away some stuff real Let's quick do it. here. We've got trivia at the end of the show. Uh, first up, we have uh, lollipop chainsaw calendars. Uh, you guys remember Lollipop Chainsaw, right? I imagine, yeah. did any of these clips make it into the Oh, no, but yet? That, now give me ideas. Dude, it's ripe fodder know, for... the girl uh, with a chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, the zombie head and the pom-poms. Anyways, Confused. we've got classy, well, calendars featuring the characters from Lollipop Chainsaw. And if you want to win one of these calendars, we'll send it to you. You just got to answer this question. <clears throat> Who was the writer that helped with story and character development for Lollipop Chainsaw. Now, as always, you're going to send this. E you're going to send your answer to us along with your name and mailing address 
to on the spot at GameSpot.com. Name and mailing address is key, folks. We've had some trivia winners in the past send us just the answer, and this is a physical item. We can't send it to you <laughs> unless we know where you live. Just send it anywhere, and it it's, goes. It'll we're, go. We're somewhere. not going to send Carlos there. It's. We're, oh, that'd be fun. We could bring the cameras. Wait, maybe we will send. Maybe Carlos. we will. We'll <laughs> ask for your permission first, though. Don't worry about it. It'll be totally legal. Uh, next up, it's it's this giant uh, like basket of pink stuff. Have you seen this, Tom? Oh yeah. On my desk. Would, how would you describe it? It's a giant basket of pink stuff, but there's candy inside of the pink stuff. There's peeps. There's peeps, there's nerds, there's like pink rock candy. Basically, Sean McInnes has been getting weekly or daily mailings from Square Enix to promote Final Fantasy XIII 2. And uh, it's basically now just this small laundry basket full of assorted candy and like a Final Fantasy book and champagne, which we're keeping and we're not sending out because that's illegal. Uh, but candy and snacks, and we're gonna send it to you and you know, it'll arrive in time for Valentine's Day maybe. And if you want to win it, this is the question you're going to have to answer. Name two. Name the two new. Uh, sorry. Name the two new playable characters in Final Fantasy XIII. Two. The two new playable characters. Tom's looking at me like, oh my goodness, I could not even name one. I can name both of them actually. You can really? name both. I can name both of them. Yeah. Carlos, what do you think? Oh, I have no idea. Don't do it wow. now. I stopped after seven. I don't know. I'm just all Greek to me. I it's... can name the, the villain, too. Caius. Okay, I, you can name the villain. Us. That works. Yes. Because the villain's not can, playable. Yeah. yeah. Caius? That's some, that's some Roman stuff. I like that. <laughs> there you go, folks. On the spot at GameSpot.com. Send us your name, your trivia answer, and your mailing address. We'll send you some free stuff. Thank you for joining us for our epic Vita extravaganza. Be sure to look out tonight on the site for the teaser for Screen Tear. Screen Tear. It's Screen Tear. Going, it's going Friday, but there's a, tree, a teaser up tonight. Watch it. There's going to be explosions. Who doesn't like That's explosions? all you need to know. And oh. video game clips. Oh, <laughs> and I'm getting frantic waves from Cynthia because we're going to show some trivia winners real quick. These uh. were the folks that we uh, sent it to <laughs> last week. Uh, Cynthia, tell these folks, who are these people? What's going on? It's a list, yay! You guys all won stuff. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, there's stuff to win for next week. You get, it's like an extra bonus. You win stuff and you get your name on the internet. Who is the lucky guy who won the GTA coffee mug slash brass knuckles? I don't know. Because that is a man or a woman to be feared. I'm going with Dustin S. Hit you with I think it's easy. They're hit you with it, then they'll ruin it. Well, if the that? mug breaks off, then you have like brass oh, like, knuckles with is, like mug shards yeah, on that it. Is uh, that's, vicious. that's even that. Let's hope we're not <laughs> giving anyone ideas. Use the mug responsibly, folks. Thank you for watching. Uh, for Tom McShay and Carlos, the Screen Tear Master, uh, I'm Chris Waters saying thanks for joining and uh, tune in for Screen Tear tomorrow. Yes.